Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 6 special guest, Mr. Ed DeLister. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome to the next episode of Mac Connections, and we've got Mr. Ed DeLister here today to speak to us, one of our staff members at MacKillop College. And Ed, first of all, good to see you, even though remotely, and good to speak to you. I'm just wondering, how are you feeling about this second period of remote learning? Uh, good to uh, see you, Andrew, and thank you for inviting me on the show. Um, yeah, look, I think, you know, after the first round, it was a bit of an unknown. Um, we sort of got into a bit of a, a rhythm there, and then we obviously ventured back to our school, which was um, fantastic, albeit for a little while. The second time around, um, I've, I'm feeling personally a little bit more confident about uh, the content that I'm delivering um, and the interactions with the students, but you've also got that, I suppose, the novelty is worn off a little bit, if you can call it a novelty, where, you know, you're in the same home, I suppose, and you're trying to find uh, new ways and I suppose new ways to deliver, you know, your lessons and be um, interactive and also be interesting and engaging, all while trying to not going crazy. So it's been it's been interesting, but, um, you know, touch wood surviving so far. And you teach in the performing arts area at the senior end of the school, in fact, across the whole of the school. But in looking at the senior area, there are a lot, or every subject's had to adjust to this period of remote learning. But I dare say a subject that has so much interaction and practical um, component to it. And the students are so interested at the interaction and the performance side of the subject. Has the challenge around modifying your course and keeping it interesting being something that's been pretty difficult to find a balance and how to achieve that? Look, it, it has. Um, there's only so much you can do via, you know, a, a webcam sort of uh, with regards to um, performance. Um, the good thing for certainly at uh, Year 11 Theatre Studies um, at the moment, uh, the students, when we came back for the two week period, um, the good thing is we started rehearsing our play, Rhinoceros, that um, the uh, students were going to be performing. Uh, they're still going to be doing a performance of that. It's going to be via Zoom at this stage, which is going to be interesting. But it just shows with performance, I think the students can still rehearse. They can record. They can get feedback. We can interact. Obviously, it's a different space because we're not directly interacting with um, other actors. But it, 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 it can be done. It's not ideal. Um, it's the same with, you know, we'd be normally going off to see live performances. However, we can't do that at the moment, but there are some fantastic resources about um, live performances, film professionally, such as Hamilton and all these things that the, uh, uh, you know, the London Theatre are, are producing. So there's still ways to um, uh, still get that theatrical experience, but unfortunately it's not exactly the same but uh, it's really, I suppose, what you have to do, the students have to, and, and I have to, is put in as much as you, as you can. And it does translate a little bit across, across the uh, internet. Um, it's going to be an interesting, I suppose, it's going to be interesting for us to do a, some sort of performance and how we present that. Because again, we also don't have an audience. That's a thing. You know, what's, the, what's it like to perform without an audience. Sadly, I've probably been in a few shows where that's been the case, but that's all right. Um, you know, it's more about um, the, uh, the actual, the rehearsal process and the journey. So it, it's been tough for everyone. Um, obviously not just uh, in the performing arts, but um, I can imagine the same would be for um, sport. Um, and, you know, that's the, those sort of, you know, real physical um, activities. So they, you know, it's just not performing arts alone, I guess. Now you're a lover of the arts as a director, a performer, a 
a person that does your own podcasts. Yep. Have, have you gone through this period missing the experience of the theatre? And you mentioned Hamilton, and I've had a, yep. a brief look at that online. Do you, have you supplemented your love of going to the theatre and being immersed in the performing arts by adapting and, and looking at the opportunities that exist online? Oh, absolutely. I think we all have been, you know, um, binging a lot of, you know, content online. I've been going on since I started up my YouTube show. I've been watching a lot of you, more YouTube than I have in the past. I've been watching a lot of um, uh, the National Theatre have been bringing out uh, in, in the past. They used to bring out like every every week a new show, Frankenstein with uh, Benedict Cumberpatch and all these amazing live theatrical performances. Um it's great. It is interesting though, um, and it's something I talk to my students about, is that there is, um, it is quite a different experience. You know, I, I've been lucky enough to see Hamilton in New York perform um, and to watch it on uh, Disney Plus. There, it's, it's amazing, but it is amazing that you just miss that actor audience connection and that energy that's in the room. So I think that's something a lot of people are missing uh, and, and are looking forward to uh, recapturing. Even um, going to the movies. I used to go to the movies every week. And even though you don't really get anything back from the uh, silver screen, you do feel that shared experience of seeing a movie in a, in a, uh, in, in a theatre. Um, yeah, so it's, it's interesting. But yeah, I've been watching a lot of old classic TV shows as well. Um, trying to uh, just find anything that's if it's not on Netflix, what have I got? I've got an old series of Heart to Heart and Magnum PI, and just pulling it off the shelf and um, just trying to enjoy that to um, to uh, get the brain cells working a little bit, or maybe so, not so much working after <laughs> watching Heart to Heart. But that's okay. that's that's okay. Um, so there's two questions that I'm going to ask you to finish off this little podcast. I think yep. the first thing is I want you to tell me something that you feel like you've gained from this experience, but then something that you've missed and you can't wait to do again when you're able to, that's the first question. So I'll get you to okay. answer that one. Something you've, something you feel like you've gained, or is there something that you've got out of this experience that you otherwise wouldn't have and something you've missed terribly and almost the first thing that you're going to want to do when you're actually able to. Okay. Um, something that I've gained. Um, I think I've gained an appreciation for, um, my students and, and the way I deliver some content. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's always the way, you know, you think you're, um, either, oh, this is going to be fantastic or this will work, or I've explained myself succinctly, um, when you go, ah, uh, no, I haven't. Okay. And I appreciate how difficult it is that, uh, that the students have, um, are doing it at their end as well. Um, so I found, I think I've gained um, an, a better understanding of the way that I teach and um, and adapting my processes, I guess, to um, to get the, the best that I, that I think I can out there. That's from a school point of view. What have I gained? I've gained an appreciation for my Star Wars collection because I stare at it a lot <laughs> in my room and I spend a lot of time on eBay waiting for um waiting for packages to arrive that's a that's a little that's something i love actually i must say that oh is that a star trek truck out the front awesome um i'm sure my wife isn't that happy with the credit card bill but that's okay um so something that i can't wait to do i it is it is um for me it's actually about performing on stage we um when the lockdown happened we were two weeks away from opening at the melbourne international comedy festival our show was ready to go publicity all done and everything like that so um i can't wait to get back on stage and to interact with my uh fellow actors because it was such a a joyous um rehearsal period so touch wood um that the comedy festival will be back and uh, if it is we'll be back there in march 2021 and before I ask the final question, are you you strike me as a as a hopeful, forward focused, positive person. Yep. Are you in your own heart and mind convinced of the fact that we'll be able to get back to somewhere what somewhere close to what we thought was a normal life, which is for me having dinner with my wife and going to see a show in one of those dingy rooms at the Trades Hall building. Yep. Do you, are you hopeful and confident that that's what we'll be able to get back to? 
Oh, of course, of course. I mean, you know, it always bugs me when people say, oh, this is indefinitely closed or, you know, and go, no, it's just, it's, it's on hiatus. It's temporarily closed. And while, yes, it's not ideal, you know, we're, um, we're having this um, period of isolation. Um, it's, for, it's for the greater good. It's for, um, to benefit everyone. But it will be, you know, in six months, eight months, it will be back to normal. People, I, it always bugs me. People are saying, oh, cinemas are never going to, they're closing. When I, it's not, it's not going to happen. Okay. It, it, it's, it may seem like that, but just look a little bit beyond all that doom and gloom. And it's hard, you know, you get all, every day you turn on the news and, you know, it is, it's all these horrendous numbers and COVID this and COVID that. And I understand that, but it can get you down. So you do have to look beyond that and think about the pleasures of, you know, going out for brunch or window sh going, going shopping or, you know, just all those sort of things. We, we can be hopeful and I'm confident. I, I have no medical background, obviously, but that's all right. But I am confident that, you know, once and once a vac vaccine um, uh, arrives, um, things will be back to normal. And the final question, I think like you, I found myself, trying to be able to give advice to my students or try to give them words of wisdom or support or just trying to get them through with some things that I've, I've tried to say and reassure them. If I was to ask you, what's one, what's one piece of advice you'd give to your students performing theatre and doing performing arts and for students in general, what would you, what have you been saying or what do you think you would say to them during this period? I always just say, try and um, to them, just to, just to do the best you can in, your, in this current situation. Okay. If you do, if you, if you're doing the best that you can, you can never be um, uh, disappointed with, with the outcome because that's the best that you can do. So be proud in the quality of your work that you do and don't expect it to be perfect because um, it's, it's hard enough to be perfect in a perfect world. Um, it's, it's, it's really, really hard to be perfect while we're all remotely learning at home. So just to do the best that you can and think about yourself as well. You know, take care of yourself, take those breaks and um, try and enjoy, you know, we were talking a bit earlier, you know, try and enjoy as the experience as much as you can. Take what's the positive that you can take out of it. As I do, I get to, I get to have lunch with my wife every day. I get to play Animal Crossing um, more often than I would on the Switch, um, you know. So um, I get to I get to uh, have my cat playing with me while I'm here waiting for um, emails to come through. So there's always a, a positive that you can take from it. So you know, be that half glass um, full person. I think if you can be. So Ed, the purpose of this podcast is to try and bring our McKillop community together and try to share an experience which unusually is something that we're absolutely commonly experiencing at the moment because unlike most of the time when we're doing slightly different things we're all doing the same thing at the moment so thanks for letting us into your life and thanks for letting us into um, the experiences that you've had during this time and I hope that your experience continues to be a more hopeful one than negative one and can I say if I can get the credit card from my wife I might be able to do much the same as you so um <laughs> Thanks for coming on and um, we hope that our students and, and the staff at McKillop have enjoyed this little chat and um, we hope to see each other in person very soon. Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate no it. Thank you. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and take care.